We are the home of progressive black talk media. This is WURD, 900 AM and 96.1 FM, Philadelphia. Streaming online on wordradio.com and the Word Radio app. It's the WURD Hot 60. Hot 60. Here's the hottest 60 seconds you missed from Wake Up With Word. Joining us now is uh, Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner. So two people arrested in uh, the shootings that took place. What can you say about this case at, at this point? Uh, we can say something. You know, we can say that the first person who was arrested actually turned himself in. And that was a guy named Jamal Tucker. And we can say that the second person was arrested based upon a very, very vigorous around-the-clock investigation in which we are all participating, and that is Mr. Anil Bug. Um, both of them have been charged with eight separate cases because there are eight victims, but, uh, you know, these are very, very, very serious charges because it's a, it's a terrible case, it's a shocking case, and it's one where I'm, I'm happy to say that we've had really good cooperation between law enforcement and the mayor. energy, health, confidence, hope, and even love. Yes, love. Breakfast in the classroom contributes to kids being more focused, which leads to higher grades, and simply just their well-being. Thank you! Learn more about how No Kid Hungry is helping end child hunger in America at helpnokidhungry.org. Starting March 3rd, tune into Afro Unity Beats Sundays at 5 p.m. Hosted by Brother Shamari, David Barnes, and Patrick Gonsaru. Afro Unity Beats features contemporary Afro beats melded with traditional African, Caribbean, and Black-rooted musical forms from around the diaspora. Check out the weekly artists from different parts of the diaspora discussing the latest sounds from their part of the world and the history of their musical origins. That's Afro Unity Beats every Sunday except the fourth Sunday at 5 p.m. Only on WURD, Progressive Black Talk Media.
Okay, remember what I told you. Be your own boss, love yourself, level up. <laughs> level Up is back for 2024, celebrating Women's History Month in partnership with WVON Chicago and KJLH Los Angeles, highlighting black women-owned businesses who are making a difference in their communities. You can nominate your business or one of your favorite black women-owned businesses for a chance to become one of five finalists who will participate in an in-person, live-on-air, Shark Tank-style pitch party. Party on Tuesday, April 2nd at the Fittler Club. The winner will be selected by a panel of corporate sector judges and will receive a grand prize valued at $5,000. Deadline for submissions is Friday, March 22nd. Visit wordradio.com forward slash level up to nominate the best of the best in black women-owned businesses. Level Up 2024 is brought to you by Comcast, the Pennsylvania Lottery, Keystone First, and Bank of America. Level Up, Level Up, Level Up. Welcome to the Sheriff's Perspective, where we explore the many important services of the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office. Learn more about sheriff sales, court orders, civil enforcement, and much more on the Sheriff's Perspective with your host, Sheriff Rochelle Vallad. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. As Sheriff, I am Sheriff Rochelle Bilal. As Sheriff for the City and County of Philadelphia, I find that most people don't know what the Sheriff Office do and is responsible for in the City and County of Philadelphia. When you become a Deputy Sheriff, you will most likely be assigned to one of the criminal, family, or traffic courts. Our Deputy Sheriffs, are responsible for maintaining courtroom security and court decor. The judge presiding over the courtroom depends on the sheriff for safety for everyone in the courtroom, including the judge. In working with the courts, our civil main desk is responsible for enforcing a variety of court orders, writ of execution, which we will have explained to you today, Rid of possession, serve as a process, tax lien, complaints, summons, and subpoenas, protection from abuse orders, and court orders on the behalf of other sheriff officers. We have a fugitive warrant that works aggressively to get violent criminals off the streets. We enforce protection from abuse and custody orders and child support. Now, most people hear of the sheriff's office and they think the sheriff sales we handle, the sheriff sales that we handle that as well, but through a court order only. We can't go pick up people's houses and put them up for sale. That's not what we do. Our real estate handles the process. A sheriff sale happens when the initial owner of the property is no longer able to make their mortgage payments or tax liens. I don't expect you to memorize all of this. Our sheriff's deputies provide brochures and numerous community events across the city. All of the information is also available on our website, phillysheriff.com, P-H-I-L-L-Y-S, H E R I F F dot com. And for the callers and listeners, you can call in at 215 634 8065. This is our first uh, sheriff on WRD, and we will be advertising sheriff sales here also. So I wanted to take each department and bring them on so you they can explain to the listeners exactly what it is that we do. When you know what we do, nobody can give you fake information as to what we should be doing when they don't even know what we do. And so today, I'm bringing in my chief inspector of court operation who knows everything about that civil unit, and he's gonna to explain to you step by step for each and every part of our civil unit. And one of the things you would probably be amazed 
as to all the things that we do. So let me introduce you to our chief inspector of court operations, who basically was the one handling everything in civil, and he's going to come on. So his name is Chief Inspector Sean Thornton. Hey, Thornton, how are you today? You on mute, Thornton? <laughs> you still on mute? Are you there? Can you hear me? Now, now can I can hear me. Yeah. Put the star. How you doing? Put the star. How you doing? What the sheriff office does and yes. and we'll be uh announcing sheriff sales on werd so people would know when the sales are happening and maybe take the opportunity to go online and bid for any of the properties that are but today we are talking about our civil enforcement and our civil unit so yes. but chief inspector i got some questions to ask you so we can start talking about what is our civil unit? Our civil unit, um, we serve, as you stated, on civil process. We do a number of things um, daily. We have uh, 11 uh, detectives assigned to the unit. Um, they go out on the street and serve civil complaints. They execute uh, evictions, serve protection from abuse orders, retrieve weapons from protection from abuse orders. Um, and serve um, writs of execution to banks. Um, for those that don't know that, what that is, um, if you're a defendant with a writ of execution, your uh, bank account could be frozen. So, and we also serve uh, injunctions, they execute injunctions. So we do so much, um, just a lot that I can get in, but that's pretty much what we do on a daily basis. So you basically have told us the different types of work handled by the civil enforcement and the sheriff. Mm -hmm. So tell the yes. audience what a protection from abuse order is and what role it plays in situations involving domestic violence. Well, domestic violence is like it was violence again or aggressive behavior typically within a home. Um, and this usually involves a, a spouse or a, a domestic uh, partner. When there's a situation with a protection from abuse order within um, the home, the person can actually go down to the court and get a court order to temporar temporarily grant relief from someone who is causing harm to another person. Um, our sheriff's office, our sheriff detectives will come, will actually go out and serve those orders. And if it's a situation, depending on how they articulate it in the court, what they could do is have that individual removed from the home so they can keep them separate and, you know, it won't cause any more violence. And again, this is all depending on what the person go down in the court to say. So what we're trying to do, what, what they're trying to do is keep them separate. Um, both parties have a right to go into court and explain their side. But mainly if it's an emergency situation, they can just go in, have them separated, until a court date later, a later uh, court date. See, what our listening uh, listeners might not know is we have an MOU in partnership with the Philadelphia Police Department that we serve and that make sure that if they serve any and we serve any, all this information is in and into the database so that yes. we don't keep, you know, serving the same place at the same time all the time. And so that's the protection of abuse. Uh, is there a difference between protection from abuse order and a restraining order? Well, a restraining order or well, protection from abuse order is a form of a restraining order. Um, there are different types of restraining order, protection from abuse order, um, protection from sexual violence, and protection from intimidation of a intimidation order. So there's just different forms of a restraining order. When a person goes down to court, they're looking for protection from abuse order. It's pretty much like a, a restraining order. Okay. So when a protection from abuse order is in place, tell us about how the process is different when there is a weapon or firearm involved. Well, again, it all starts with 
the plaintiff and how they articulated it in the court. Well, they'll go down and explain exactly what happened. Um, as I stated, that there's some type of abuse. Well, we have all we all know there's all kinds of abuse. There's verbal abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, whatever it is. But when they go down to court and say, "Hey, listen, this individual abused me. He physically assaulted me," um, the court's going to want to know how. What did they do? What did they use? What are, what are some of the things they say? Um, a petitioner can go down and say, "Hey, this person may have a gun. Um, this person threatened me with a knife." This person threatened me with um, a broomstick or whatever it may be, or he hit me or he or she hit me or whatever it is. Well, what happens is, according to Act 79, the defendant has uh, 24 hours to relinquish any type of um, weapons. Well, Act 79 is typically involving firearms. So what happens is once our detectives go out and serve that protection from abuse order, the defendant has 24 hours to relinquish their firearm to our office or to a law enforcement agency. So what they're trying to do is, is one step is separate the individual from the petitioner or the plaintiff. And two, under when, when firearms or weapons is involved, take that firearm or weapon away from that person. So again, so there won't be any type of harm or any type of abuse going forward until their court date. And once, once it all fishes out and everything is, uh, is uh, complete, then the two individuals just would be at peace and won't have any issues going forward. So cause there was reports one time that uh, sheriff office wasn't gathering weapons uh, that was listed on the protection from abuse order. Now, what was back then before in a protection from abuse order, it would say weapon, but it wouldn't mm -hmm. be specific. Yes. It is now, but before it wasn't. Now, see, a weapon could be a bat, a mm -hmm. room, a knife, a bottle, whatever uh, material that somebody can get in their hand that can hurt another person can be considered a weapon. Yes. That was before. Now, it's more specific in there. So when you say weapon in a protection from abuse order, what does the protection from abuse order have to actually say? It will actually have to say firearm. And in some cases, actually have a description of that firearm as well. Um, what happens is, well, we also work with the police department, as you stated. Um, let's just say if the defendant is a registered firearm owner. So, again, we get all that information, all that intel from the police department. They'll let us know that this individual has a firearm and they're registered. So, yes, they're registered firearms. So, they have a firearm and they need to uh, turn that in. So what our detectives would do would go and try to get in contact with that individual. If they're unsuccessful with getting in contact with them, we'll um, send an email or make a phone call back over to the uh, gun permit unit and they'll do further investigation. And just to keep in mind, let's just say that individual who is in possession of a firearm, who is a registered firearm owner, if they do not turn their weapon in after that 24 hour uh, time frame has um, uh, elapsed, they could be charged for the domestic violation, which is also a misdemeanor of the second degree. So um, the police department and the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office is uh, taking those steps to try to get those firearms away from the individual. If they have a PFA, protection from abuse order, they're taking those steps and efforts to um, retrieve those firearms. All right, so that's one thing that the civil unit does. Now, let's get into another part. If someone wins a lawsuit, they say, I sued you and I won. <laughs> Why did you win the lawsuit? They can follow procedures to reach out to the civil enforcement to help collect that debt using a few different methods. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do writs of execution and writs of possessions work? So risks of executions and risks of possessions are two um, separate um, enforcement. What, so is, when what the, actually is a writ? Because most people well, don't even know that. It's, it's a court order. It's a fancy way of saying a court order. Okay. So let's just say an individual win a lawsuit. That lawsuit is called a judgment. Writ of execution is ways that we help facilitate the, to satisfy that judgment. So basically, for lamest terms, get your money back. You know, we're trying to get their money back in different means. 
So as I stated earlier, I talked about um, freezing of the account. It's called a writ execution or a bank attachment. So in other words, our sheriff detectives will go to the bank and serve those documents to the bank. And if that defendant have an account there, their uh, account can be frozen. And that's a way to get that ball started, get that ball rolling to um, satisfy that judgment. Again, the lawsuit is actually, you win the lawsuit, it's a judgment. So the second thing that we can do is um, sell your personal property. So what exactly what does that mean? What happens is the detective will go into a property, itemize the goods in the property. We're talking about everything. We're talking about a television, the big 83-inch screen TVs, refrigerators, beds, um, whatever's in your property. And we actually will itemize those goods and put them up for sale for the public to um, see and, and possibly sell those goods to also satisfy the judgment. Another way when you uh, another way we can um, satisfy that judgment is uh, selling of real property, which is the sheriff sale. So let's just say if you have uh, you're delinquent on the taxes on your house and you, and you, you haven't paid in a number of years, I'm not going to get into the reason why, but it's an unfortunate situation. Um, the you plaintiff can actually that's my next one. I'm going to go into that one. <laughs> okay, you know, yeah, okay, I'll just I'll hold off on that one. Let's just talk okay. about real property. So, and when you talk about writ of possessions, writ of possessions is another way, is a fancy word of saying evictions. Um, the plaintiff actually will go file for a writ of possession. They'll bring those documents over to the sheriff's office. And what we'll do is um, evict the individual out the property and turn it over to the plaintiff of um, that writ of possession. Okay. So what role does the civil division play in dealing with tax liens? Got you. So basically tax liens are, let's just say, if you didn't pay your taxes for whatever reason. Again, it's called a writ of execution. What happens is that property can be put up for sale. Um, and it's the city of Philadelphia. The city of Philadelphia is the plaintiff. Okay. So what happens is to satisfy that judgment, your property can be put up for sale to satisfy that judgment. Um, and that's also another way, uh, another form of a writ of execution. Do we make those up or where do we get those writs from? Oh, they come from the city of Philadelphia. Um, they quote her and it's actually stated at the top of the hour. The sheriff actually can sit in the office and do absolutely nothing until a writ comes through our main desk. Once those writs come through our main desk, then we'll start working and doing the things according to the law. So we don't, as you stated, we don't go out and just randomly pick a property that we want to sell. We don't randomly pick a property that we want to evict people from. There's an issue with the plaintiff, and it's typically monetary. And how to um, right that wrong, the sheriff's office is involved to right that wrong, whether it's a judgment or a complaint need to be served, things of that nature. So we just here to um, peacefully satisfy judgments and right, right certain wrongs. You know what, I'm so glad that you're here to explain what our civil unit does. I do appreciate <laughs> Chief Inspector Short because it's a lot. It's not oh, a yes, it because you basically went over from protection from abuse orders, now you're dealing with the writ process, and now you're dealing with weapons that are involved in protection from abuse orders. You cleared up that now on the protection from abuse orders, that weapons has to be defined. It is it's a knife, a bottle, a brick, a broom, or a bat. It has to be in there. So when people see weapons, they automatically just go to guns. Not all the yes. time are they guns. There are other forms of weapons that can do another person harm. So that's going to specifically as it relates to real estate. Tell us how civil enforcement plays a role in evictions for property owners. For property owners, okay. It's funny, you know, I knew about, we, we talk about, uh, I'm going to be on here and talking about the civil enforcement. And I was sitting around the house and I was just watching television. It, someone on television said that we study history, not just for history, but why we do things today. So I want to talk about where the word sheriff derived from. We used to be the uh, Shire or Nareev, which means we bring peace and law and order to a situation. That was the history of our office. So saying that, and I thought about that, 
That is exactly what we do in our present day. Things happen in the past is who we are today. So saying all that to say, a property owner have a writ of possession. And they want an individual evicted from a property. The sheriff gets involved to bring peace and order to the situation. Now we don't favor just the property owner. We also, we don't, and we don't favor the occupant. We stay a neutral party to facilitate the entire process. So property owners that need to get their property back, the sheriff's role is to safely, peacefully, professionally execute that writ of possession, execute that eviction. Stay right You'll there. Act- yes, Stay ma'am. right there. Execute that mm-hmm. eviction because we got to go to a break. Okay. So we're going to go to a break. And just remember, we got to execute that. And we're going to come right back with completing that conversation with uh, Chief Inspector Sean Thornton uh, of the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office. Okay. We'll go ahead to break. And we'll be right back. The Philadelphia Sheriff's Office presents the March Forward Food Giveaway on Saturday, March 23rd at 11 a.m. while supplies last. Please join us as we help push the community forward at Dare to Imagine, located at 6610 Anderson Street. Thank you to our community partners, Caring for Friends, Laborers Local 57, Brothers of Strawberry Mansion, Share Food Program, Sharing Excess, Dare to Imagine Church, Gift of Life Donor Program, and the Sheriff's Deputies and Community Outreach Team at the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office. For more information, contact our office at 215-683-4805. You're listening to Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, progressive black talk media, bringing joy and power to the people for 20 years. Welcome back to the Sheriff's Perspective. You're listening to Sheriff Rochelle Bilal, and I have one of my chief deputy of court operations, Sean Thornton who's going to go back into finishing up the answer that we was talking about specifically as it relates to real estate. And we was asking them to tell us how civil enforcement plays a role in evictions for property owners. Thornton? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. (laughs) All right. So as I was stated, as I stated, when that property owner need our services to evict an individual from their property, I suggest that the property owner just stay away, stay away from the entire process, stay away from the uh, the um, occupant, just allow the sheriff's office to do what we need to do. Um, we do things uh, peacefully, um, professionally, and, and respectfully to the individual and the property. When you're dealing with evictions, there's a lot of emotions involved, and the occupant become could become hostile or whatever. I mean, we, I mean, we get it, you know. So sometimes in some cases, that property owner could agitate the situation and just causes harm to everyone involved. So for the property owner, I encourage them to just stay away or we encourage them and we, we have conversations with them all the time and let them, we'll let them know when the actual eviction date and the things that they need for the eviction. So then allow us to do what we need to do. So that's how that's done. And there's just so much more involved with it. Um, when we execute those evictions. Okay, thank you. Yes. That's it. So, so that information keeps everybody safe. If you're dealing, if you're a property owner and somebody has not paid their rent and you come to the courts and you get a court order and you either bring that to the sheriff's office, that's it, you know, to bring it to us and then stay away. Because a lot more trouble can assume if you are actually um, just going out there and trying to do it on your own. We want to yes. keep everybody safe. We want to keep you, the owner of the property, and your tenant safe at the same time. And so we say stay away. Let the sheriff's office do what it's supposed to do. But let's get to this one because I think this is the hot topic. What are some of the advantages for a property owner in working with the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office to handle an eviction. 
versus any other agency? That's a very good question. And as you stated, Sheriff, it's definitely a hot topic. Let's just say this, and, and I'm knocking on wood. I've worked in the civil enforcement unit for approximately nine years. And I executed hundreds, hundreds, two, I won't say thousands, but hundreds and hundreds of evictions. I actually have a 100% um, zero incident rate executing these evictions, 100%. There was some pushback and some people were arrested or whatever, but when you talk about safety and things of that nature, 100%. And it's according to how you execute these evictions. First thing is transparency. We let the occupant know that, hey, look, you have a pending eviction and we want to give you the resources necessary to um, once that uh, eviction, once you have to leave that property. We want to give you a, a 21 day notice of the property, 21 day notice of to uh to leave the property once that 21 day notice has expired we're going to give you an actual eviction date we're going to explain to you there's different resources involved and actually i have a, we have pamphlets that we can give the occupants to let them know what's going on again there's a human side to what we do the sheriff was elected the sheriff he was elected by the people so there's a human side to what we do and how we execute and how we do things and actually personally speaking I wasn't actually evicted from my property when I was a lot younger, but there was a situation where I could have been. So I know what that feels personally. Again, these situations can happen to any of us at any given time. So again, how do you handle it? How do you engage people? That's the first thing. So the next thing we uh, give you notice, if there's an elderly person, we, we have resources for them. If there's a mental health person there, we call it mobile mental health. If there's animals in a property, we call animal control. You know, so we do all these things. We don't just show up, knock on your door, and just say, get out. Now, there's another agency here in the city of Philadelphia. I'm not going to say who they are exactly. They do things different. And I actually witnessed some things over the phone. The occupant was calling our office because they thought it was a Philadelphia sheriff's office. They said these individuals at our house saying that we have to leave the property. And I could hear them in the background screaming at that person. Then that person on the phone with me screaming at them. Unfortunately, because I didn't have a court order to um, do anything, I really, my hands was tied. And I can literally hear the person just telling these people, you got to get out, you got to get out the property. As I stated, we do all these things, the transparency is there. We bring in resources, outside agencies to help facilitate the eviction. So that's the biggest difference, who we are versus any other agency. Again, I have a 100% um, incident lack of incident rate going, and I want to maintain that. Um, I'm not at the unit right now, but I express that to the uh, individuals that's still in the unit. It's very important how we deal with people because at the end of the day, that's who we all are. We have family members uh, that could be in the same situation. I get calls from different people that I know personally that may be involved, that have similar situations and you know what they need to do. So again, the transparency is very important for the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office and how we execute these evictions. Showing up unannounced is just would never ever happen with us. And again, that's something that has happened, you know, with other agencies. Because we there were some conversations about uh, the Sheriff's Office and other people. Let me just inform the community. Our deputy <laughs> sheriffs are trained. They go to Penn State and they have 19 weeks of training and they have a, a ton of information on how to deal with civil matters. And so they are professionally trained and they have to pass this training in order to be a deputy sheriff. You just can't pop in here and say, I'm a sheriff. You actually have to go to training and it's 19 weeks of time that they do. And they are recertified every year. Every year they are recertified, aren't they, their weapons are recertified their updates as far as their civil procedures or any legal updates that deal with law enforcement, they are certified and they are retrained. That's what we do. And so when somebody says the agency that dealt with this at one point, tell us that once you have a person that has to be a victim and the person basically makes an agreement with the homeowner, when they, if that agreement, after they make the agreement, let's say three months later, they miss the payment. Yes. 
what does the homeowner have to do? Or can they just, the homeowner, can, can they just go back there and just throw them out without any notice? No. If you deal with the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office, you have to start that process over. See, again, as you asked the question earlier, well, I think I indicated earlier, if you want these individuals to get from your property, you, you went to court, the court granted your wishes, and you articulated the reasons why. And the court granted your, um, your, your request. You brought those documents over to us. As I stated, stay away from the situation. Allow the sheriff's office to um, evict that person. Now, if you decide on your own that you want to engage that person and try to make a backdoor deal trying to work with the person and then call us and say, hey, look, I don't need your services anymore, which is all your right. That's fine. But don't come three, four months later now and try to dangle that, that rid of possession over that person's head and say, if you don't pay, I'm going to get the sheriff to come out to your property and evict you. We are not your bully or your bulldog that you can try to attack on these occupants. Again, as, as I stated, we are new to a party and we work with both sides, but we will not work with just you to attack the occupants, the tenants in these properties. We're not going to do that. So if you wait three or four months later down the line and now they didn't pay for whatever reason, they didn't pay you, now you want to come use us and say, hey, look, we want to um, just execute that eviction. You're going to have to start that process all over again. You're going to have to go to court and get an updated writ. When I mean updated, we're talking about time and, and actually a fresh writ and start that process over again. So they can't come back out and say this old writ that was six months ago, I now have to come there and throw you out if they came to the sheriff's office? They cannot do that. No, absolutely not. Thank you. And I appreciate that. And that, and that sheriff, can I just add one thing? You talked about the training. Also, in order to be a um, uh, civil or sheriff's office detective, you have to take a test and pass the test and be selected to be in our unit. We take highly trained people who's competent, who has to work at as a deputy sheriff, uniform deputy sheriff, and then you are allowed or promoted to detectives in order to do this. So we said, we're talking about seasoned, trained, well-respected individuals who's out here on the street executing these evictions. And professional. Absolutely. Very, very, very professional. <laughs> and I, I, I've got people that says, look, when the sheriff came, I understand I had to do this, but they were very professional. And they and they basically handed them the gloves. When when um, Chief Inspector basically said that when there is an eviction, that if there's a situation that arises, that that person cannot come out of that property on that day. If there's some mental health issues, they bring in mental health specialists to basically deal with that person. If there's some health issues, then the, all of that can stop while the person gets the help that they need. And so that they will, we don't just throw people out of the streets. Even if you have to leave that day, other organizations are called in to help you. So mm -hmm. there is a humane part of this. We know people may have to go through this, and the owners of the property have the right to basically do what they do, especially if there's a situation that they may not have been receiving their rent. They have that right to come to the court and get relief. But yeah. we're not the ones to basically just throw anybody out on the street, and we try to do our best to bring in the resources to help people. Yeah. I can ahead. I just add one more thing? I'm sorry before you get to your next question. Um, also, if you're being evicted, um, your property, as you stated, there, your property, your, your goods in, in the property will not just be thrown out on the street. Your property, your goods in, in your property will be stored in a storage facility, or it could just be stored inside the home for at least 30 days. So, and that's an agreement that's worked out with the uh, the uh, property owner. So either the property owner gets the uh, the moving truck and the storage facility to take those goods out the property and put into storage for the first uh, 30 days, or your goods could would be stored inside the property, depending on the situation. So again, you may have to leave the property, but you're just, your, all your goods would not just be thrown out on the street. Just wanted to add that in, too. Thank you. That's a good addition because you will have to remember that you will have to come back and get your property. You will have to make arrangements to get your property either there or out of storage. Yes. But you have to remember to come back and get them and not just leave them for somebody to throw them away. That's great. 
So my last question, and I, I want to make sure I reach out to people, and if you want to call in and speak to, to the chief inspector, the number is 215-634-8065. 215-634-8065. And you're speaking to Sheriff Rochelle Bilal and Chief Inspector Sean Thornton. And we're talking about our civil enforcement unit within the sheriff. So my last question, how does civil enforcement work with handling court orders on behalf of other sheriff's officers? Well, this court order, I believe there's sheriffs all over the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and throughout the uh, United States. So what happens is, let's just say there's um, documents that need to be served here in um, Philadelphia. Those court orders will come in. We have a designated individual who works. Actually, she's really good at keeping a log and keeping track of these court orders coming from other uh, jurisdictions. And we will serve those documents. We will... Um, ensure that they have an affidavit of service, and we will send those uh, documents back to that particular uh, sheriff's office or um, courts um, as needed. And on the flip side of that, if there's documents that's generated here in Philadelphia, we send those documents out to those other jurisdictions, whether outside the state or outside the uh, county in Pennsylvania. And we have an individual who um, keeps track of all those things. So we're just not here just serving documents and doing things inside the uh, inside Philadelphia County. We um, serve documents that's coming from other jurisdictions as well. So thank you so much with that. So yeah. Chief Inspector Thornton, is there anything else you think the audience should know about civil enforcement in the sheriff's office? Um, well, just to recap, as I stated, we are a neutral party to both sides. We do not offer legal advice. We offer procedural advice and how we want to do things. Um, um, if you have any issues, you can always just call our office directly. Um, any questions or concerns, we have, we're very transparent, professional. We'll lead you the right way, but we can actually tell you how to proceed on situations. As I stated earlier, we're, we're here to, to provide relief, peace, and order to a situation. And that's what we do in civil, day in and day out. I was proud to actually be there for those nine years, working with some tremendous staff, civilian staff, <clears throat> excuse me, civilian staff and um, detectives, some great supervisors. And um, I've moved on now. So I'm thankful and I'm grateful just for the, just being a part of the operation. Thank you so much. Uh, so we're going to wrap this up because we have another break coming in. But the number is 215-634-8065. 215-634-8065. For anybody to call in that want to ask a question of Chief Inspector Sean Thornton, and we'll go to break and we'll be right back with the Sheriff Perspective. Get registered and bid at the upcoming tax sheriff sale on Friday, April 5th. Held online at bidforassets.com forward slash Philadelphia. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office at 215-686-3560 or visit our website at phillysheriff.com. You're listening to Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, progressive black talk media, bringing joy and power to the people for 20 years. Welcome back to the Sheriff Perspective. You're listening to Sheriff Rochelle Bilal and Chief Inspector Sean Thornton, and we are dealing with our civil enforcement unit. And we basically went over all the, the processes that's dealing with civil enforcement. And so if you have any questions, make sure you give us a call at 215-634-8065, 215-634-8065. We are doing this podcast to basically advertise sheriff's sales and also to inform the community of actually what the sheriff's office does. Well, we are out in the community, most people didn't even know what we do. 
Some of them didn't even know we existed, but we do. And there are different departments within the sheriff's office to service the communities of the city and county of Philadelphia. If you want to get in contact with us or go on to our website, phillysheriff.com. I repeat it, phillysheriff.com, P-H-I-L-L-Y-S-H-E-R-I-F-F dot com. We have our real estate tax lien sales up there. We have our community outreach. You can get in touch with any of our units within the sheriff's office. And let me just give you that. We have real estate division, civil main death, civil enforcement, homeowner, asset recovery team. That's our heart program. Community outreach, public information, constituent services. We have our bike unit, K-9 unit and fugitive warrant unit. And, and we will have each and every one of our departments within the sheriff's office come on and explain to you exactly what it is that we do. And so that you will be informed of what the sheriff's office does. And we hope that it helps you in your community and helps you if any of those things come to play in your life. And any calls? Anybody call? So we can move on to the next thing that I want to talk about. Okay, we're just starting today, and so hopefully if you get any information or you want to call us, you can. Now, on our phillysheriff.com website, we, in the sheriff's office, we have a constituent services unit. Our constituent services unit is mandated to get all the information, state, local, and federal, to show or help people save their homes if they get into any situations. That book is on our Philly Sheriff website. When you go to phillysheriff.com, you can download any of the booklets that we have on there. And we'll go to we'll go to a break and then we'll go to the calls. Is there a call? Take the call. Yes. Hello? Hello. Welcome to the Sheriff Perspective, and thank you for calling in. Yes, ma'am. I, I, I couldn't help but call in because I said, boy, I don't know who's talking, but she sounds awful important. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to talk to you, and, uh, and, uh, and I had a question for you. Go ahead. How do we get an office? Uh, there's a lot of gentrification going on now in the inner cities, and we all know what that's all about. Yes. But people that have been living in their houses 30, 40, 50, 60, some cases, 70 years, I think there should be an office of long-term residency. It's nothing else for it, just the respect of knowing. You you know what? The One of the things I heard um, from now Mayor Parker in her address yesterday, that there's supposed to be a one-shop uh, place. Because we in this city, we got a all bunch of departments that we all go around to. And it's one building here, one building over there, one building over there. So that may be a suggestion that you can give to her that there is a homeowner's uh, building or apartment or unit that those people, long-term homeowners, can go to to get all that information as to the different discounts on your taxes, how, but she did say that. She said there is a one stop that she's going to put together so people don't have to go all over everywhere to get the things that they need, especially for the homeowners. Mm. Well, I guess what I was what I was saying was to try to see if it would be possible for, like, when you grow up in a neighborhood, you learn to respect your elders. They, they always tell you honor the people that have been around for a while because they, they, they're seniors there, not just seniors, seniors in home ownership should have some weight to it. I just think that uh, an office like that would be great for, particularly since the new residents that are coming in at such a rapid pace, uh, at least the people that have been there feel like Dr. King said, I am somebody. You are somebody. Yeah. But you feel like you're being pushed out because of the gentrifying that's going on in your communities. And we all have experienced that everywhere. Uh, um, let's say, we put that suggestion to everybody. That is a good idea. Mm -hmm. And maybe you want to start researching what that would be about. How would it look? 
So when the suggestion is put, we can reach back out to you. Just oh yeah, it. yeah. You you can call me at the shop because I see it tying into the to the schools. It's going to give respect for those elders that have been around for a while, the people in ownerships, families. There's a okay. bunch of good information pertaining to long long term ownership. They should get some type of credit as it relates to being there. I got you. That those of us who are staying here and not like leaving to go anywhere else. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for your call. That's a good suggestion. I just say to you, start putting that plan together so we can visualize what that would look like and maybe we can push it together. Send me an email. Go to phyllisheriff.com and give me that information and what it looks like and maybe I can um, have those conversations with people. Thank you for calling WRD. We have another caller on the line. Hi, uh, yes. Good afternoon, Sheriff. How you doing? I can't, I can't hear you. You're going to have to speak up. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Hi, uh, yes, Sheriff. I just wanted to thank you for doing an amazing job. You know, I'm not, I'm not originally from Philadelphia. I just moved back from New York. I've been here for a few years. But I just wanted to thank you for doing an amazing job. And don't worry about the haters and all of them out here. Keep doing your thing. You're doing an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I can tell by the accent that you are New Yorker, too. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Is there another call on the line? Okay, we're going to take a break and we'll be back uh, with our final conversation about the sheriff respected. to get registered and bid at the upcoming mortgage sheriff sale on Tuesday, April 2nd, held online at bidforassets.com forward slash Philadelphia. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office at 215-686-3560 or visit our website at phillysheriff.com. You're listening to Word Radio, 96.1 FM and 900 AM WURD, progressive black talk media, bringing joy and power to the people for 20 years. Good job, you are. 96.1 We're back on? Bringing joy and power to the Yes. Okay. Welcome back to the Sheriff Perspective. You know, we are new at this, and this is our first time. <laughs> and we want to thank Word for basically making sure that we are able to come on and talk to the community members about what the Sheriff Office does because we found out that we didn't. But we're also out in your community. If you want us out in your community to bring all the information of what the Sheriff Office does, send us an email, phillysheriff.com and we will put it in our calendar and do our best to get out to you. But don't send us one talking about you want us there the next day. We get booked up pretty fast here and summer is coming. So don't send it to us saying you want us to borrow. That's not gonna happen. But if you send it in advance and we can get there and our deputy sheriffs and community outreach and can be out there giving a bunch of information. We got a, a community outreach event that we are going to be doing March the 23rd of 2024. It's called March Forward Food Giveaway. We're going to be at Dare to Imagine. Dare to Imagine at 6610 Anderson Street. This is March the 23rd at 6610 Anderson, Anderson, Anderson Street. And it's going to start at 11 o'clock. This is Saturday, March the 23rd, 2024 at 11 a.m. Dare to Imagine, 6610 Anderson Avenue. It starts at 11 while supplies last. It's a food giveaway. We give out all sorts of food with our partners, Caring for Friends, Share, SE, and our partners, Local 57, who has been working with the Sheriff's Office on the food giveaways around the city. And so those are the things that we're going to continuously do. So. Chief Inspector Sean Thornton, I want to thank you so much for coming on today yes. about our first show. And if you can give your last thoughts on the Sheriff's Office and civil enforcement, please do. 
just real quick, first, I want to say congratulations to you, Sheriff. Um, and this is actually what's needed, the Sheriff perspective. And as you stated, um, people do not know who we are and what we do. They make these assumptions and that we can do certain things. And then at times, they make the assumption that we can do certain things, you know, especially those who, uh, who um, may be uh, detained. You know, they think that we can't um, lock them up, but we can. The sheriff is uh, the sheriff's office have a lot of power and it goes throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The civil enforcement unit does a lot of stuff. We have to get legal updates every single year. Um, we're professional. We um, respectful. We are understanding. We care. Simply put, it's a situation where everyone is not built to do this type of work. And the, the ones that are actually doing are unique in, in their role within the sheriff's office. So again, I would just like to say thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Um, I'm 100% supportive of you and what we are and who we are in the Philadelphia Sheriff's Office. And just want to say thank you again. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Inspector Sean Thornton, who is now our Chief Inspector over court, court operations. And basically, uh, it's because of the good work that you have done. So. We're getting down to our last minute, and I wanted to make sure that you know that each month, the third Saturday of each month, we're here on WURD 900 AM, and we're going to bring each of the departments on to explain specifically what it is that they do, and so that you will clearly understand all the things that we do in the Sheriff's Office and what they are and how you can reach out to each of the departments in the sheriff's office if you so ever need to. Don't forget, check our website out because everything that we do and when we are transparent is uploaded to our website. All our community outreach events, uh, the information on the sheriff's sales, information on evictions, information on writs, all of that information is there. You can go on phillysheriff.com and just look and browse and see everything that has been going on since I took office in 2020. And we have a warrant, uh, we have a warrant, let's say, portion to our, our, our website, where if there's somebody that's wanted, specifically, they are loaded up on our website. Some people don't even know that you may have somebody in your house that's wanted. Go on our website, check it out. And if you see that that person in your house that you did not know is wanted, give us a call. We want to make sure that the streets are safe every day, winter, spring, summer, and fall. And so just call on the sheriff's office. If we can help, we will do so. And thanks everybody for listening in on our first event on our first podcast, Sheriff Perspective. We will see you again, and we're going to break right now. Thank you for listening to the Sheriff's Perspective with your host, Sheriff Rochelle Ballow. Tune in every third Saturday at 3 p.m. on Word and visit phillysheriff.com to learn more about our work in the community.